name is Nur Ayn Mayra. My name is Nur Shunda. And my name is Nur Akila Elena. And we are from JBA1144E. And today we are going to present about Company Analysis. Revenue decreasing to three million six hundred and four. 
2014 and 2015, um, Sarawak had a shortfall of 12,042 harvesters. For year 2016, the revenue increased due to expanded oil palm plantations through the company Shin Yang Oil Sarawak Sendirian Berhad. In 2017, the revenue keeps rising due to factor of 1,834 hectares of palms area were replanted. And last, 2018, the revenue decreased to 27 percent because of performance of the company in fresh fruit bunch production declining due to factors of economic situation within the year. The second chart is operating expenses. In this figure 2.0.2.2, it shows the operating expenses of Sarawak or Palm Berhide. For three years, from 2014 to 2016, it is an uptrend price movement. But in 2017 and 18, 17 it declined. 2018 it rise back. Okay, the second chart is operating expenses. In figure 2.0.2.2, uh, this chart shows the operating expenses of Sarawak Oil Palm Berhad. For three years, from year 2014 to 2016, it is an uptrend price movement. But in 2017, the price decreases from 54 million and 64,000 to 5 million 151,000. And in year 2018, it rises to 7 million 440,000. But in year 2018, it rises. The increase in year 2014 2016. It is because of the company provided and held an external and internal training for their workers and employees. This is to enhance their knowledge and skills. In 2017, it declining because of company might decrease and control in their financial flow of the company. And 2018, it increasing because of Increase in company operating expenses. Third chart is net income. In figure 2.0.2.3, the figure shows a net income of Sarawak Oil Power High. The chart for this figure is volatile. Uh, in year 2015, it declining from year 2014, and in for 2016 and 17, it increasing, but in 2018, it declining. In 2014, the net income is 123,399,000 due to high requests in oil palm. In 2015, the net income declining to 91,903,000 because of there is a low request for palm oil in the year. But in 2016, the net income of Sarawak oil palm increases. In 2017, Sarawak is the second largest oil palm. It became increasing drastically because the company export more of their oil palm. And this is also due to company produce higher production of fresh fruit punch. For year 2018, the net income declining to RM67 million. 907,000 because of the price for oil pump in the year draw. Next, the fourth chart is finance cost. In the figure 2.0.2.4, it shows the finance cost of Sarawak oil pump per head. For the three years uh, from 2014 to 2016, the interest obligation of the company became stable. But in 2017 and 2018, the amount of finance costs increasing by year. The company is badly with the increasing cost of productions. In 2017, 
the finance cost for the company increasing. This is due to company have a good corporate governance and provide the health and welfare of workforce in the company. In 2018, the company rises its finance costs because of the tax that imposed by the government in the year. Alright, last chart is dividend distribution. In figure 2.0.2.5, it shows the dividend distribution increase from year 2014-2018. Dividend increasing for 5 years straight. For year 2014-2016, the distribution keep increasing until year 2018. The company also issues a new ordinary share for 5 years. In 2017, the dividend keeps increasing to 28 million 540,000 because of company's revenue increasing as well. In 2018, the dividend distribution increased because of company wants to attract more investors to invest in their company. Okay, this figure shows a comparative performance between FBM KLCI and Sarawak Oil Farms Berhad. Uh, the orange line representing as FBM KLCI and the black line is Sarawak Oil Farms Berhad. This comparison is done to determine whether Sarawak Oil Farms Berhad is outperforming or underperforming. Then the figure shows that uh, Sarawak Oil Farms Berhad is underperforming level and it happens when FBM KLCI is crossing above the Sarawak Oil Farms Berhad. So that means uh, the price of Sarawak Oil Farms Berhad is lower than FBM KLCI. So this is uh, the trend analysis of Sarawak Oil Farms Berhad from the beginning of May 2018 until the end of June 2019. Primary trend which is the market is moving. This uh, figure show, shows a downtrend that started at the beginning of June until the end of December 2018. This will push the investor to sell their stocks. We move to secondary trend, uh, which representing as correction in the primary trend. Based on the chart, the primary trend is downtrend, and there is uptrend correction, which consider to be secondary trend. As you can see, the secondary trend started at the end of December 2018 until the beginning of February 2018. So this will cause a buying stock and selling it later due to the short trend period. Okay, a minor trend is a Distraction that created by primary and secondary trend. Uh, minor, on this chart, minor trend started on January and happens only two weeks. Price pattern is a recognizable configuration of price movement that is identified using a series of trend line or curve. It is used to examine current movement and to forecast future market movement. Price pattern used to signal transition between rising and falling movement. Uh, this pattern are used by charties to trigger buy and sell signals and to identify current trend. Reversal pattern is known is known when a price pattern signals a change in trend direction and when the trend continues in its existing direction following a brief pause is known as a continuation pattern. The pendant patterns for the Sarawak Oil Palm Berhad based on the figure is bearish pendant uh, and a continuation pattern as the price of a stock move 
into a tighter and tighter consolidation range. Panels usually only form over shorter periods of time, one to three weeks and not more than one month. In the figure, the panels form between early September 2018 to the ending of September 2018. Spotted also in the figure is a common gap or also referred to as a threading gap or an area gap. Common gap are usually uneven full or fairly quickly getting Next, we are going to see technical indicators and overlay of Sarawak oil pump height between 8 May 2018 to 10 May 2019. Squiggy light found above, under and on top of the price information on technical chart are refers as technical indicators. Then, overlays are indicators that are typically plotted on top of the price bar and use the same scale as price. Indicators are used to alert investors to study price action more closely to inform other technical tools and to predict the direction of future prices. There are two categories of indicators, lagging and leading. Leading indicator gives signal before new trend or reversal occurs. Meanwhile, lagging indicators give a signal after a new reversal occurs. There are a few types of indicators used by investors and traders to help them make decisions to buy or sell their stock. For example, a simple moving average, a moving average conversion, divergent, or also known as MACD, stochastic, relative strength indicators, and million percent R. Okay, the first one that I'm going to show you guys here is simple moving average 30 days. The SMA 30 days is considered as a short term SMA to indicate the signal of buying or selling of securities which are used by traders or analysts. Based on this figure, the first signal plotted is in the middle of May 2018, which is a selling signal. As the closing price moving below the moving average, followed by second selling signal in the end of August 2018, and in the middle of October 2018, spotted another signal which is selling signal. And trader is advised to sell, uh, actually existing investors is advised to sell their stock at this time so that they don't suffer additional loss. On the early of January of 2019, the first buying signal is spotted as the closing price moving above the moving average but after months and a half the selling signal is found again at the end of February 2019 because uh, this is indicate a bearish signal when the closing price moving below the moving average during this signal a existing investor is advised to sell their stock while potential investors should wait until the trend begin to moving upward or a buying signal occurs. Next one is simple moving average 50 days. Uh, SMA 50 days is considered as an intermediate length SMA. It is used to measure the signal at the beginning of a trend, either it is going to be uptrend or a downtrend. Based on this figure, the first and selling signal is spotted at the middle of May and the end of August. Uh, existing investor is advised to sell their stock at this time because we can see it is a selling signal because the closing price is crosses below the MA line. And then uh, on the middle of January, 
a buying signal is potent. Potential investor who wish to own this stock should buy at this time. But when in the early of May, the selling signal spotted again. And then buying signal occurs at the end of April and then continue by a selling signal. Next is simple moving average 30 days and 50 days. Investors or traders can look for buying and selling signal by using this technical overlay. Buying signal can be seen when shorter SMA or SMA 30 days crosses above the longer SMA, while selling signal is when the shorter SMA crosses below longer SMA. Based on this figure, as you can see here, at the middle of September, a selling signal is spotted because as you can see, the shorter SMA is crosses below the longer SMA and then a buying signal spotted when the shorter SMA cross above the longer SMA at the early of February of 2019 and then at the middle of March the selling signal then spotted. Now we are going to technical indicators. Okay first is Moving Average Convergent Divergent or also known as MACD. It is an indicator that most well known in technical analysis. Trend and momentum behind the security can be signaled by MACD. It is to measure short term momentum compared to long term momentum that can help to determine the direction of the asset in the future. MACD is an indicator that consists of two lines, MACD line and signal line. Buying signal can be spotted when the MACD line cross above the signal line, while selling signal can be seen when the MACD line cross below the signal line. Based on this figure, at the middle of May 2018, we can spot a selling Signal. And then at the middle of June and July, buying signal occurs, followed by a selling signal at the end of August. And then we go to end of November, a selling signal spotted, and then a buying signal spotted at the end of December. Potential buyer should buy at this time as it show a buying signal followed by a selling signal at the early of February then at the middle of April a buying signal occurs again when the make day line cross above the signal line and followed by a selling signal at the early of May of 2019 next you are going to go look at the stochastic. Stochastic is a technical momentum indicator that compares a security closing price to its price range over a given time period. This indicator helps monitor a trend, sustainability and signal reversal in prices. It is plotted in the range from 0 to 100. Traditional setting is 80 as the overbought and 20 as the oversold. Stochastic is sensitive to market movement, but it can be reduced by adjusting the time period or by taking a moving average of the result. Stochastic comes in two types, percent K line and percent D line. Percent D line is used as a signal line. Buying signal in stochastic can be seen when the percent K line cross above the percent D line in the oversold region, which is below 20, and selling signal can be seen when the percent K line is crossed below the percent D line in the overboard range, which is above 80. Based on this chart, as you can see, 
At the early of June and July of 2018, we can see a buying signal occurs, then followed by a selling signal at the middle of August. After the selling signal occurs, it is followed by a buying signal at the early of September, end of October, November and December of 2018. And then, a selling signal occurs at the middle of January 2019 when the percent K line cross below the percent D line in the overboard range. Follow again by a buying signal at the early and end of February and the middle of March when the percent K line cross below the percent D line at the overboard range and followed by a selling signal at the end of April. Next is we, can, we are going to see the relative strength indicators or also known as RSI. It is a momentum indicator measuring the speed and change of price movements of stock. It helps to indicate whether a security has seen more buying signal or selling signal. It helps to indicate whether a security has seen more buying pressure or selling pressure. A lot of investors or traders send buying signal in RSI when the RSI line is below the, the below 30 and selling signal when the RSI is above 70. If you see on this chart, a buying signal spotted at the end of June, at the early of July, at the end of August, early of October, at the end of October and at the end of November. Because if you see that um, this chart, every line that cross below 30 is considered as a buying signal in RSI. Then, a selling signal occurs at the early of January when the RSI is above 70 and followed by a buying signal at the end of March 2019. Selling signal occurs again on the end of April and the early of May. William percent R compares a stock close to the high low range over a certain period of time, usually 14 days. William percent R oscillator has a range from 0 to negative 100, where reading from 0 to negative 20 are considered overbought, and reading between negative 80 to negative 100 is considered oversold. Potential investors and traders can know when to buy when the William percent R indicator is below the oversold line and they also can know when to exit the market when the William percent R indicator is above the overbought line. Based on the figure of Sarawak or Copper High, we can see that the first signal spotted is at the middle of May which is a selling signal when the William percent R line is above the overboard line. Next, buying signal happened at the end of June and early of 2018. Potential investors should buy the stock at this time if they want to if they want to hold the stock. Selling signal then happened twice in the month of August 2018. It then followed by a buying signal at the early and middle of October, middle and end of November 2018. William percent R is above the overboard line and it happened twice in the month of January 2019 based on this chart. It indicates a selling signal. At the middle and end of February and the early of March and the early and middle of April 2019, buying signal is quoted as this area. The middle of May 2019, a signal then spotted indicate that existing investors should sell their stock. Last signal spotted on this chart is a buying signal at the middle of May of 2019. Next, you are going to see the all balance volume or also known as OB, OBV of Sarawak Oil Paper Height 
from 8 May 2018 until 10 May 2019. OPV is a volume momentum indicator that is volume flows to predict changes and measure positive and negative volume flow. It also measures buying and selling pressure as a cumulative indicator that adds volume on up days and subtract on down days. Charities can search for divergent between OBB and price to predict price movement or use OBB to confirm price trend. Charities should focus on the trend for OBB. It can determine if the current trend match the trend for the underlying security and look for potential support or resistance. Finally, a volume spike can sometimes throw off the indicator by causing a sharp move that will require a certain period. Bullish and balanced divergence can be used to anticipate a trend reversal. Based on SOP chart here, we can see uh, that during May 2018 until the middle of December of 2018, the company has lost its momentum until the news titled highest growth in profit after tax over three years plantation and the slogan better yields better growth growth this news translating into a three-year compound annual growth rate of 27.5 percent the impressive growth of sop win them the age of brc award for the highest growth in pat in the plantation Sector. After this news occurred, the company gained back its momentum. That's all for me. Thank you. In conclusion, for many, Sukasi Oscillator and RSI is full, while William Percentage R is high. In summary, recommendation of technical indicator are strongly full. Value and recommendation of technical overlay for SMA 30 days and SMA 50 days are set, while double SMA is whole. In summary, recommendation of technical overlay are strongly set. Summary for both potential existing investor technical indicator show that existing stockholders should strongly hold their stock, while potential investors should not buy. For technical overlay, existing stockholders should strongly sell their stocks. For potential investors, 